And good afternoon, everyone. This is Kilo Charlie 9, Victor Kilo Victor, and this is the Friday afternoon QSO Vlog Network. From now until 5, we record live, and if you have a radio you want to check out, give us a shout. We're recording now, and later we'll post it up on YouTube, so you can come by and do a call letter search for KC9 VKV, and that will take you to our QSO Vlog page. Also today, we're running four Internet SDR receivers, monitoring Rochester, New York, Atlanta, Georgia, Arlington, Virginia, and Milford, Pennsylvania, trying to get a better copy on our 100-watt friends. The audio of these four SDR receivers comes up on a six-position rotary selector. Also on this selector is our local receiver. And today our local receiver is running two 10-foot vertical magnetic loop antennas, one aimed north and south and the other east and west. The north and south mag loop can be rotated. They are selected by a three-position rotary switch. Position 3 is a cophase option that many times is 3 to 4 dB hotter than mag loop 1 or 2 by themselves. Well, those are our working conditions. How about yours? This is the Friday afternoon QSO Vlog Network. And uh, we'll try now to uh, make contact with Charlie, K1GZL, uh, to bring us up to date on uh, the weather and the band conditions. Charlie, got a copy? Uh, yes, uh, beautiful. 20 over 9, direct. You're coming through direct uh, from southern Indiana near Louisville. Beautiful, beautiful copy. Uh, we just had a snow shower. The cold front has just gone through uh, maybe 30 to 40 minutes ago. And right now, of course, on, uh, on this 22nd of November 2019, it's 3.35 uh, p.m. here on 7188. And uh, we were up to uh, 40 degrees uh, about uh, four hours ago. We were up to 40 degrees, and that melted some horrible ice situation I had here. It was awful, absolutely awful uh, over the last few days. Uh, early this morning, I was working in VK3MO down near Melbourne, Australia, uh, and uh, un uh, unfortunately, I had 85% reflected power and not much power. <laughs> I was barely able to get through. So that was something. We had KN4 George Baker Zulu, Charlie, from Inverness, uh, Western Florida, north of uh, 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 Tampa. Uh, he was uh, visiting uh, VK3MO, and I couldn't load worth the uh, darn uh, with the uh, condition. So I'll turn it right back to you, uh, Jim, and see how uh, you are copying this afternoon. At this moment, the sun is just breaking out. But there are many snow showers ahead of uh, west of us that we will be going through over the next few uh, hours. We have an average of about um, 10 inches of snow, 20 centimeters of snow on the ground at the present time, leftover snow that is. And um, we have um, we have really uh, been under the gun here. And the storm on Sunday, we're going to miss most of it. Uh, we're going to get the northwest edge, and I don't think we're going to see much out of that one. Uh, yes, KC9, VKV, K1, GZL, and you're coming in like you're sitting in uh, right in my radio shack. Roger, Roger, Charlie. Well, likewise, sir. Uh, I'm on my... Uh uh, my uh, magnetic loop antenna in the cophase mode and uh, you're doing about uh, 15 over at the moment and you know what they say about the best laid plans of mice nor men well uh, I have now in front of me uh, four um, uh, Amazon uh, fire tablets I finally got all my um, internet uh, receivers in one location now I'm running four Amazon fire tablets and I uh, I have them, uh, hmm, unfortunately, uh, two of them are set for a, uh, a Wi-Fi uh, router that's in the other end of the house, and I have two uh, that are set for the uh, router right uh, next to me here, about 10 feet away. So, uh, And I hadn't had a chance to actually check them out under fire, and I'm seeing now that my two that are set for the 
further uh, router are not working too well and I'm not <laughs> if I knew what the uh, password was right offhand for the local uh, router I would uh, crank it in but unfortunately it's uh, it's sealed in steel somewhere and that, so it should be interesting we are running two uh, for sure uh, Rochester and Atlanta and uh, Rochester has a tendency of bumping me off after about half an hour but there is a second Rochester SDR that I can go to which will give me another half hour uh, outside of that I'm not real sure how uh, this is going it's going to be an interesting afternoon Charlie okay well you're just pouring in 20 uh, 25 over right now and here you are well and I'm not <laughs> if I knew what the password was right offhand for the local router I would uh, crank it in but unfortunately it's, uh, it's sealed in steel somewhere and uh, so it should be interesting we are running to uh, for sure uh, Rochester and Atlanta and uh, Rochester has a tendency of bumping me off after about half an hour but there is a second Rochester SDR that I can go to which will give me another half hour so there you are Jim uh, uh, I hope that is coming through uh, yeah a very interesting thing uh, occurred uh, now, uh, Charlie, KN4GBZ, uh, he and, uh, of course, you've talked to Mike, WA30, uh, on the east side of Pitt Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, at Monroeville. Uh, but Charlie is, uh, uh, a couple, two days ago, arrived down uh, in uh, Melbourne, Australia, uh, and he, uh, he's got a remote with him, and he was talking to me uh, uh, the day before uh, yesterday in the early morning uh, from VK3MO's QTH and uh, he had his remote and he was talking live right uh, to me on Ian's uh, station in Australia then he went into the next room and, um, and he fired up his remote in Florida and um, the Florida signal was not quite as strong as Ian was uh, and uh, then he came back in and talked to me directly from Ian, and it sounded like he was on the same talked to me directly from Ian, and it sounded like he was on the same station. So that was weird. Uh, but uh, you're coming in great, K KC9 VKV K1GZL. I'm glad you could hear me on uh, the uh, uh, the quad loops, or I mean the loops you have. Roger, Roger, Charlie. I just uh, flipped over and uh, checked out Atlanta, and you're doing probably about a 10 over uh, in Atlanta, but uh, doing a much better job on my uh, two uh, co-phase mag loops. Uh, so that's what we're running right now. And that's amazing. You know, uh, them folks with uh, those remotes, they can go uh, anywhere in the world and just, uh, you know, uh, run that uh, their remote station just like they're being there. It's amazing. Roger, Roger. Oh, yeah, it's incredible. It's incredible, the technology uh, these days. Uh, it's just uh, unbelievable. Uh, when you stop and think about it, uh, Charlie, KN4GBZ, he had to uh, uh, take a four-hour flight from Tampa to uh, Los Angeles, then 16 or 17 hours nonstop from Los Angeles to Melbourne, Australia, and yet, instantaneously almost, you get on the air, you're talking 10,500 miles, and, uh, and yet at the same time, you're hearing, uh, you're hearing Charlie, and when he goes in the other room and gets on the remote, all at the same time. Uh, in other words, to show how remarkable all this stuff is, this radio is, um, all right, now if somebody... Uh, was listening to me um, as an example talking to Australia and they were about um, 80 or 90 feet away 80 or 90 feet away from me and could hear me talking uh, that um, uh, it takes about that much time for uh, the voice to go 1100 feet a second to go 80 or 90 feet uh, as it does for the radio wave to go all the way to Australia go ahead Roger, it's just amazing. It's just amazing. And, you know, I, I guess it's just a, a great thing that we are living in the time that we are we are living in, you know, because uh, in earlier times, uh, the electronics were just were not there, you know. They were being developed. And uh, I'm, I'm real happy to be uh, in, the, uh, in the time span of life uh, 
uh, you know, that, that we are in, Roger. That's not technology. Uh, okay, yeah, that, that's uh, absolutely, uh, Jim, absolutely correct. And we're living in the time when everything is exploding from next to nothing. When you look back maybe 100, uh, 20, 100, say 150 years ago, what do we have, horse and buggies? And uh, look at the technology now. It, 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 it's mind-boggling. You wonder, how the heck is this possible? Go ahead. Roger, Roger. Well, you know, uh, <laughs> it, but it does have its ups and downs. Uh, like I say, I'm this Rochester uh, SDR that I'm using, Rochester One, I call it. Uh, it it uh, gives me a half hour, but uh, then it gives me 20 minutes of that half hour if I don't do anything with it. Uh, it says, "Well, inactivity. <laughs> Goodbye." So, uh, gosh, uh, some some of the SDRs are really tough to. Uh, to uh, keep up with. Now this one, this number one SDR in uh, Rochester has just uh, kicked me out, so I guess I'll have to go to um, the number two Rochester. But uh, I don't know, it's a constant game, Charlie. I, I've got to find some uh, SDRs that uh, aren't so persnickety, Roger. Oh yeah, well the thing, uh, the thing is, I guess they have their own schedule uh, on how they want to um, allow the programming and not to uh, overrun it. Uh, I don't know the the way they uh, set it up. The way they set it up, uh, Jim, it's just uh, it's mind-boggling. Uh, it's almost uh, instantaneous when you consider uh, the coverage, and you can go electronically from one part of the country to another to get an incoming signal. Uh, it's just um, it's uh, it's. <laughs> It, it, it's uh, exciting. It is an exciting uh, thing. So, uh, real fine. Well, Jim, look, I won't hold it any longer. There may be many fellows uh, that would like to get uh, their rigs uh, tested out. Would like to get uh, their rigs uh, tested out there. Tested out there. But I'll tell you, they're miles apart, uh, or a little bit more, uh, directly there. This uh, quad. Uh, it's not tuned up for this frequency. I'm tuned up for 7152, so I'm, uh, I'm only putting out about uh, 900 here. Normally I run about 14, 1450 uh, down uh, uh, where it's resonating, uh, but uh, I'm glad you can hear me. I'm glad you can hear me. My SWR is about 1.9 or 2 to 1 uh, up on this uh, frequency. So, Jim, I'll say 7-3, and here's a little bit more of your signal. Crank it in, but unfortunately, it's uh, it's sealed in steel somewhere, and uh, so it should be interesting. We are running two, uh, for sure, uh, Rochester and Atlanta. Okay, so I hope they all continue to work. Of course, we're in the shortest term, uh, uh, the longest days. The longest days, so that means the skip is going to be uh, getting out there and it's going to be fairly hard here on 40 meters uh, for you to uh, locally, uh, from where you are in your Louisville, to get uh, the short skip. Uh, whereas, of course, uh, the SDRs, well, you can tune them right in because they're further away and not uh, skipping over on the shorter skip stations that would like to talk to you. Okay, 73, Jim, and thank you so much. And uh, if I'm not iced up, I'll see. I'll try to see you next week. Boy, it's been terrible for a few days. Awful conditions here uh, with the ice we had. Awful. Uh, yesterday, good heavens, it was it was impossible. KC9 VKV K1 GZL Clarksville, Northern New Hampshire. We are clear, and I want to thank you very much for picking me up. Roger, Roger, Charlie. Thank you, sir, for participating. Always a pleasure. Threes up that way. Stay warm. Uh, this is a KC9 VKV on the Friday afternoon QSO Vlog Network. My name is Jim, KC9 VKV, and I'm better known in some circles as Dr. VKV, but I can't say exactly in what circles those are. But anyway, we are recording now live till 5, so if you have a radio you want to check out, give us a shout. This is KC9 VKV. Kilo 4, Bravo, Kilo Alpha. Uh, there's a call sign with the X at the last. Give me the call sign again, please. Kilo Delta 2, Alpha, Bravo, X-ray. Very slowly, sir. Try again. I'm sorry. I talk fast. Kilo Delta 2, Alpha, Bravo, X-ray. Kilo Delta 2, Alpha, Bravo, X-ray. Roger, what's the name there, sir? Name and handle is Mark. My guy Romeo Kilo. I'm uh, transmitting from uh, Haddon Heights, New Jersey. <laughs> 
Mark, you do speak fast. I, it was Mark, Roger. Yeah, it's Mark. Roger, I was starting to say ARC. <laughs> slow, slow down just a little bit. Uh, what radio are you running in, sir? Uh, this is a FTX 5000MP. Uh, All right, and uh, tell me about your antenna system. The antenna is a four-element Yagi. Um, on, and it's on this particular band, it actually acts as a rotatable dipole. Uh, roger, roger. Uh, and you say it's a rotatable dipole? dipole? How is that? No, no, no. It's a four-element Yagi. Uh, it covers 20 to... 10 normally you can get a it's a it's a Mosley you can get a kit for it to work on 40 but on 40 it's it's slightly directional but you know on a, a normal the way a beam works but it's basically by uh, by directional uh roger that roger that well sounds good to your uh, i'm running my uh two uh, magnetic loop antennas in the co-phase mode you're giving me about a uh, uh, 15 over roger roger yeah you're, you're about 20 over s9 here i must be on you so yeah you sound really good I was listening to your discussion uh, with the other gentleman regarding uh, uh, SCR-based radios. You know, there, there is latency with those, both coming and going. You know that, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Many of them, uh, I, I, you know, I have them come up as audio inputs to a six-position rotary switch. I have four uh, fire tablets uh, right now, and uh, they, the audio comes up on a four-position rotary, uh, six-position rotary switch, uh, along with my uh, local uh, audio. And uh, many times when I'm re using a SDR, uh, when I back off the key, I can hear almost the last sentence uh, come back to me, Roger. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's, not, it's not a perfect thing, but it, it's definitely advantageous. I personally don't believe in using the internet at all uh, with ham trends. I'm one of those guys, uh, you know, I'm pretty new ham, but I don't like using, uh, you know, I'm pretty new ham, but I don't like using, don't like using other means of, tr of technology. It's not, I, I don't feel it's uh, in, the, in the heart or in the spirit of ham radio, in my opinion. Roger, Roger. Well, I'm looking for the cleanest signal for my 100-watt friends. Uh, I want them to be able to hear the, uh, the best signal possible. Uh, that's why we've gone out of our way to uh, run the four SDRs, trying to get closer to them. Not always is that possible, but it is uh, for options uh, that I would have uh, or would not have if not running them. Uh, plus the same thing with uh, the magnetic loop antennas. If I weren't running two 10-foot magnetic loop antennas, uh, I might not copy them very well with just the uh, the dipole. So, uh, you know, the name of the game, I think, is options. Roger? Yeah, I, I guess so. Ultimately, uh, you want to you wanna use what's best for you. Now, those SDRs, all, you're running remote right now? No, no. No, these are SD, internet SDR receivers. Uh, there, you know, I'm monitoring uh, Arlington, Virginia, Milford, PA, Rochester, New York, and Atlanta, Georgia. And they, they are four fire tablets. This is the first time I've had four fire tablets. I've had two fire tablets and a couple of PCs uh, that uh, I w was using to give me the uh, four internet SDRs, but uh, today is a maiden voyage of running four uh, fire tablets right here in front of me. And uh, unfortunately, uh, the two new ones are set up on a router that's at the far end of the house. And uh, so they're, uh, they're not as stable as they could be. Whereas, you know, I've been running uh, the other two older ones on a router that's uh, like 10 feet away, Roger. Yeah, yeah, a couple of solutions to that would be a, re a repeater, uh, or they do sell that. If you're, uh, they don't have to uh, buy a, a rent that or buy it see your ISP, or you can use, uh, doesn't give you any problems, you can use the electrical, electrical uh, router that goes through your electric to connect to your Wi-Fi. I've got a router five feet away. I just, uh, unfortunately, I've got my uh, two new tablets assigned to a router that's about 110 feet away. So, uh, you know, it's just a matter of uh, changing the uh, router uh, for the uh, two SDR, uh, SDR receivers. Not a, not a problem. It's just, uh, unfortunately, at the moment, I'm kind of tied up, Roger. Uh, I hear you. I, I sound good. It sounds like you're, you're really getting... Uh into the spirit of uh, the new SDR technology. You know, I, I have no problem with it. I, I have an SDR radio. I have an SDR IQ box, you know, and I'm also very heavy in the computer side. But, um, you know, I, I guess receiving is fine. It's, when you start transmitting remotely, and eh, especially when they use it for contesting, it's kind of iffy. 
Yeah, Roger. Well, we went through all kinds of uh, tests uh, when we uh, first started with our first mag loop, and uh, we did do uh, quite a bit of shootouts between the uh, mag. The it's a ten foot vertical mag loop, uh, and we did a lot of shootouts with it and our uh, normal dipole. I must say, our normal dipole is a perfectly tuned resonant uh, resonant antenna. Uh, normal SWR on that antenna is uh, 0.02, so it is. Uh, it is a champion uh, resonant antenna, so it, the uh, Magloop really had a job um, uh, going up against it. And unfortunately, the, I find that Magloops are not uh, quite uh, as hot a lot of times as the, uh, the dipole. So I am running, uh, I decided to just run the dipole as a transmit antenna, and I'm just using the, um, the Magloops as a receiver antennas, Roger. Yeah, yeah, got, I heard all that. Okay, yeah, well, you know, it seems like you got a lot of traffic here. I don't want to ho hold up the frequency too long. So, um, yeah, let, let you complete some of this traffic. Uh, KD2ABX, to be honest with you, I, I didn't write your calls down, so you can finish. Uh, Roger there, Mark. And I've looked at your signal. You have uh, about uh, 3 dB dynamic range, which means your average uh, percent of peak modulation is between 80 and 85 percent. And your audio EQ curve is just uh, perfect, uh, coming in right uh, between uh, QSO and contest. So you couldn't ask for, for better EQ. So we'll say threes for now. You have a real good afternoon, great weekend. Uh, this is Kilo Charlie Nan, Victor Kilo Victor, and the Friday afternoon QSO Vlog Network. If you've got a radio you want to check out, give us a shout. Kilo, Kilo four, Charlie Tango, 3, Alpha. Kilo Sierra Charlie. Sierra Charlie Station, come back slowly with your call sign. Kilo Charlie 3, Kilo Sierra Charlie. That's a Kilo Sierra Charlie. Roger that. Roger, Roger. What's the name there, sir? What is the name there, sir? My name is Gary. I'm here near Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I'm on, on a newly restored Kenwood TS520. I wanted to make sure I wasn't splattered and making all kind of nasty sounds. Well, I don't know about the splatter, but uh, your audio is uh, just fine, nice EQ. Uh, and it does seem to be about uh, 3 dB, which is exactly what you want to be. So I must have all the little dials and switches in the right place, I guess. It would sound so, sir. Uh, I would uh, certainly, maybe, uh, do you know where your ALC is? Just double check your ALC. Uh, we recommend using uh, a mid-scale to two-thirds setting for your ALC, which is adjusted through your mic gain. Well, let's just see. That's right about where we're at. Well, maybe a little bit above. Roger, yeah. It sounds just a tad hot, but, uh, you know, mid-scale to two-thirds is, I think, ideal, uh, and that is the uh, the fattening uh, uh, part there that will give you the 3 dB dynamic range, and uh, that means that uh, your average uh, percent of peak modulation is 80 to 85 percent, which is just, uh, I think, perfect. Roger that. Thanks for that feedback. Now, this radio, I've got a bunch of radios, and I haven't studied this one in depth. It has a DX switch that you pull. Does that narrow the bandwidth? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. You, do you have a book with that? Or maybe you could consult uh, Google. <laughs> Google knows everything. Well, I just really looked at it. Did that, did that change the audio quality, the audio quality at all? I, I pulled the switch. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure if it does anything. I, I don't know. I couldn't say for sure, you know. I, you, you, If you did it in the middle of a sentence, uh, I, I think A-B's, you have to do an A-B within a second, one, you know, I think to be effective because, uh, you know, these uh, bands shift around and if you wait, uh, you know, on an A-B, uh, you, who knows, you know. So, but if you can do hello 123A, hello 123B, that's a pretty accurate way to do uh, a comparison, Roger. How do I do that? Well, let's try that. This is with the switch out. This is hello, one, two, three, A. Hello, one, two, three, A. Hello, one, two, three, B. Hello, one, two, three, B. Uh, it wasn't a bunch of difference, but I'm hearing some distortion, so uh, you might want to back down on your audio just a tad to stay in the mid-scale to two-thirds uh, position on your ALC. That is uh, just absolutely 
perfect as far as uh, no distortion, you know. And when you start headed towards the red, uh, that distortion level starts creeping up. So I do want to keep it right there. Matter of fact, what I would suggest for you for now it would be to keep your ALC up. And uh, as you talk, to be sure that, uh, you know, you've got that mic gain set. Because uh, that ALC meter will show you when you're, you know, above the mid-range to two-thirds. Well, Roger, thanks for, thanks for your feedback and your advice. I just wanted to make sure it didn't sound horrible. You know, it's uh, been sitting on a shelf somewhere for probably 20 years, and I just brought it back. So I have a little bit more work to do on it, switches to clean and some other stuff, but uh, it sounds like it's working fairly well. So thank you. I'll, I'll be clear with you. Thanks for your feedback. Kilo Charlie 3, Kilo Sierra Charlie. Yeah, it sounds, it sounds good. Just a tad hot. But it uh, sounds good, and you get that uh, ALC uh, level worked out, and uh, it will be El Perfecto. You know, a lot of the older radios actually sound better than some of the new ones, you know. it uh, I don't know what it is, but uh, uh, they do, except, of course, for the real new ones, like the, uh, um, you know, the 7300s and the 7610s and those kind of stuff. Uh, I love those radios, too, because their audio is so super clean. Well, anyway, we'll say threes for now. Have a good afternoon, great weekend. Uh, this is uh, Kilo Charlie 9, Victor Kilo Victor, and the Friday afternoon QSO Vlog Network. If you've got a radio you want to check out, give me a shout. There's a Z Golf station out there. What's the call sign, please? This is W4 Zulu Golf India. Name is Mike. Over. Roger, Roger, Mike. Let me get that down. And where are you located, Mike? I'm in uh, audio, audio there. I'm in the northeast Alabama. I'm uh, up in the corner up there, and I'm on a little Yezu um, X108G transceiver. Over. Oh, Roger, sounds good. Uh, getting looks to be about a 12 over on you, sir. Yeah, I'm driving a little, uh, oh, I'm driving a 30L1 with it, putting out about 150 watts, so I was sure to get you, but uh, I've got the uh, compressor on on this to, uh, uh, it doesn't doesn't give you DB, it's 2-1, 3-1, etc., and I've got the first notch on it, 2-1, and I didn't know whether that was enough or not, just a second, uh, there it is with no compression on it at all, none at all, none at all. And there it is at the first notch of compression. Over. Roger. Uh, check the second notch. Let's see where we go. Okay. There's the second notch of compression. Uh, W4ZGI. Now go back to the first. You sound perfect with just in the first one, Roger. Okay. Uh, there is uh, there is no compression at all. And uh, is uh, is that the one you meant, or just the first uh, compression? Uh, no, the uh, first compression. Uh, I believe in, uh, usually we say uh, uh, the compressor is set to about a third of its capabilities, a, uh, a 3 out of 10 or 30 out of 100, however the nomenclature of the input, uh, uh, you know, control pot is, uh, about a third of its uh, capabilities. That way nobody ever hears it working, but it is working, and that's the main thing. You don't want to hear uh, a compressor compressing. When you when you hear a compressor compressing, uh, the guy's got too much compression. Yeah, I know it. I sure do. And uh, this, uh, this little Chinese radio doesn't give any kind of a percentage or anything. It just got uh, two or three different notches on it that you can uh, adjust to. But I appreciate it. I've had very good audio reports with it uh, set on this setting, and I, I didn't know whether it was better this way or one up or one down, so I certainly appreciate your help. You have a wonderful signal here in northeast Alabama. Over. Roger. Thank you, sir. Uh, now, uh, do you have EQ on that radio? No, no, I do not have EQ, and there's no ALC meter on this radio, just a power output uh, uh, digital meter. All right, so without the, with the absence of EQ, I would suggest that you pull back off mic about two inches. Uh, and you, you do have a mic gain control, Roger? Roger, I do not. I, uh, let me think, do I have a mic gain? No, I don't have a mic gain control. There's one inside the radio, but you have to tear it apart to get to it. So uh, I am back about six inches from the microphone right now. Roger. Now, come on up on it, just like you were. I, I was I was going to do some uh, inverse uh, uh, um, bass buildup, uh, you know, proximity effect. Uh, inverse proximity effect where you, you know, you, you can EQ by pulling off mic, but uh, uh, I think uh, you're better off where you were, Roger. 
Okay, I'm up. Uh, this is about three inches from it. This is normally about where I talk into it. Over. Yeah, you got it. I wouldn't change a thing. Get the get the duct tape. I will, and I sure appreciate it. Uh, you do a great job with people. You very. I've I've looked at your website, and uh, you do a fantastic job and a wonderful service. I appreciate your help a lot. Uh, this is Mike W four ZGI seventy three. Roger, Mike. Now, I would suggest one thing for you. If you went down to your local music store and uh, get yourself a foam windscreen to put over that mic, get a foam windscreen at your local music store and just put over that mic, and that will take care of the last vestiges of uh, any kind of uh, mouth noises or plosives or, or anything. It just uh, it's, uh, it's all positives, no negatives with a foam windscreen. Roger. Roger on that. The uh, I was going. I I do that. I do it with my other mics. Uh, this is one of those hand mics that's got a bunch of push buttons on it too, and it's got a little bitty slot uh, where you uh, uh, well, talk into the front of the mic, but it's going into that little electric condenser uh, element inside. And it's a slot that's a quarter of an inch wide and about a sixty fourth of an inch uh, wide uh, deep. Over. Roger, Roger. Okay, uh, the way to handle that uh, before you, you know, they make the windscreen, those foam windscreens, well, they're only about three inches long, so they just fit right o even over even a hand mic, you know, uh, just just perfect. Uh, the, the newer ones, are, like I say, they're only about three inches long. But in the entry in between that, uh, what you could do with that mic is uh, talk, don't talk into it, talk across it, pull it up to your, your mouth, put it to the side, and where it actually touches your mouth, but just talk past it right across it roger roger on that that's what i'm doing right now um and that uh, it seems to be modulating every bit as well uh, hopefully that sounds a little better roger and your eq sounded a little bit better too a little bit uh, higher end uh, that way so i would just run it just just like that roger roger thank you again seven three Roger, Roger. Three sideways, sir. Have a good afternoon, a great weekend. This is the Friday afternoon QSO Vlog Network. If you've got a radio you want to check out, uh, give us a shout. We are recording now live till 5, at which point, uh, you know, later we'll post it up on YouTube, and you can go to YouTube and do a call letter search for Kilo Charlie 9, Victor Kilo Victor, and that will take you to our QSO Vlog page. And on that page, you'll be looking for one QSO Vlog entitled My Group Air Check 11. 2219 today's date my group air check 112219 this is a KC9 VKV listening November 2 Bravo uniform Kilo 8 Charlie Tango there's a November 2 station a November 2 station come back slowly phonetically with your call sign yes November 2 Bravo uniform echo the name is Ron Roger, Ron, uh, let's see, did you, was that your phone or mine? What was that, Jim? Was that your phone or mine? I heard a phone ring. No, it was not my phone. It might have been a dog whining. I got a dog sitting behind me here. Who is whining? Maybe that's what it was. Uh, no, I, but I don't think it was mine. Anyway, uh, where are you, Ron? What's your location? Yeah, okay, Jim. Yeah, I'm in Gipsdown, New Jersey. I talked to you last Friday, and I was on a different uh, microphone. I was on a Heil 781. Today, I'm on a Heil ICM. So I changed microphones, and I was just curious, uh, how, you know, how it sounded and everything. All right. Uh, the thing is, Ron, whenever you change microphones, you need to always go back and check your ALC because not all microphones are designed equal. Some microphones are hotter than other microphones. So when you sw change microphones, go back and uh, check your uh, ALC level. You want to be mid-scale to two-thirds. Now, uh, right as we speak, uh, you seem to be uh, a, a little um, not quite as uh, fat as you could be. Uh, so uh, I will, uh, you know, this next uh, go around, uh, if you can bring up your ALC and adjust your mic gain to where the, your ALC meter is reflecting a mid scale to two thirds, Roger. Yeah. Okay, Jim. Yeah, I just brought the mic gain up a little bit, and I'm um, just maybe a tad over two thirds, and uh, so that's a little bit of a change. I, w I had the mic gain down about twenty percent. And now I just brought it up to 35%. So hopefully there's some 
some difference in the in the audio. Oh, Roger that, Roger that. Now we've got somebody that sounds like they're they've about a one KC off, uh, trying to transmit, <laughs> trying to uh, communicate one KC off of this frequency. Uh, whoever it is, uh, move on down there a couple of KC, KC more at least, maybe three. Uh, it'll be a lot better for you and uh, me. Anyway, uh, Ron. Uh, uh, gosh, uh, so uh, is that the same radio you just swap microphones or the same microphone you swap radios? Uh, yes, Jim. The IC7300. And I just swap microphones. The IC7300. And I just swap microphones. I, the Heil ICM. And the only thing I actually changed was the mic gain. I had the compressor set at three. I have the base set at minus three, and I have the treble of plus three, and when I first called you... 25%, and I just brought it up now. So, uh, yeah, same radio, IC7300, and just this uh, new uh, aisle ICM microphone. Uh, Roger. Well, sounds good there, and uh, I think when you brought that uh, mic gain up, uh, it started to uh, fatten up a little bit. Now, you are running your uh, compressor at a 3. Is that a Roger? Yes. Let me check here. I got the compressor at 2. Let me see here. I just brought the compressor up to 3. Over. All righty, and tell me about your antenna system. Yeah, well, the antenna is an inverted V. Cut for 40 meters, apex at 35 feet. It's an each end coming down and roughly around 20 foot, and I'm feeding it with coax, so 213 directly uh, from the rig to the, um, the antenna. Running an amp, AL80B, and let's see, it looks like I'm uh, speaking about 700 watts on the uh, meter here. Uh, so that's the working conditions on this end, Jim. Roger, Roger, Ron. Um, I would, uh, if you can go to your EQ, I would crank in a couple of dB uh, more treble EQ, uh, a little more top end EQ on that that uh, that microphone. Now, you know, when you switch microphones, you may have to pull it back, but usually, <laughs> uh, uh, top end EQ really helps uh, the brightness uh, of the signal and therefore the intelligibility when you're in adverse uh, noise conditions. Roger. Yeah. Okay, Jim. Very good. Okay, I changed the treble. I, I, I boosted it up to a plus four, and the uh, like I said, the base is a minus three. So yeah, I did. I just uh, took the treble up a little bit. Roger, I think it sounds a lot better. And uh, if you get a chance, uh, when you uh, listen back to your uh, audio, if you go to YouTube and do that call letter search, I think you'll agree. Uh, like I say, uh, if you go to YouTube and do a call letter search for Kilo Charlie 9, Victor Kilo Victor, that will take you to the QSO VLOG page. And you'll be looking for one QSO in particular. I think we're at uh, 820 or 30 uh, QSOs uh, on that uh, page, not on that one page but on the, that uh, location but you'll be looking for uh, uh, one that's entitled my group air check 11 22 19 my group air check 11 22 19 today's date roger oh yes jim i understand that like i said i contacted you last friday and we had a choose now and i went on youtube and i listened to myself and that's when i decided well i'm not too happy with the 781 uh, maybe I'll try this ICM microphone. So yeah, I definitely go on YouTube and uh, listen to myself, and that's a, a great service. So very good, Jim. I'll pay a little seventy-three to you, and you have a good uh, weekend and great holiday coming up. And thanks again. So you take care. KC9 VKV N2 VUE. Catch you another time. Roger, Roger, Ron. Three that way, sir. Have a great. Uh afternoon a beautiful weekend this is casey 9 vk <laughs> hello where is it uh, somewhere on the east coast yes uh, casey 9 vkv and the friday afternoon qso vlog network where uh, we uh, record uh, live till five if you've got a radio uh, you want to check out give me a shout casey 9 vkv listening hello hey Charlie Tango. Charlie Tango Station. Uh, come back with a call sign slowly, phonetically. 
Okay, KC9 VKV Jim from Kilo 8, Charlie Tango. Name is Bob, QT8 Southern Michigan. I signal your Q5 S9 uh, plus about 10 dB. Over. Roger, Roger, Bob. Well, you, you're blowing my... Uh, I'm copying the mail on uh, my two 10-foot magnetic loop antennas in the uh, co-phase position, and you're running about uh, 15 over, Roger. Yeah, uh, Roger. Well, you're actually uh, better than 10 over here also. Nice signal. Hey, uh, Jim, uh, I, uh, I'm running uh, my uh, audio setup here. It has microphone has a physical screen and has a... Uh, foam rubber uh, windscreen also, running them both. Uh, how about if I pull that rubber one, tell me if you hear any difference. Could you do that? Oh, yeah. Give me a, give me a 10 count and at 5, uh, uh, do your thing. Okay. This is uh, with both uh, windscreens. A 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And this is just the physical screen without the styrofoam. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And this is with the styrofoam uh, back on. Uh, what do you think? Well, actually, it sounded better uh, with both of them on, which you would not think. But uh, on the other hand, if you were to go to your EQ and crank in a couple of dB on the top end, I think that would help uh, both of those positions. Uh, just a little bit brighter on your audio, I think, would uh, do uh, great uh, wonders. Roger? Okay, very good. Uh Okay, let me, uh, what range do you think? Uh, 2,000, 2,500 maybe? Uh, what kind of EQ do you have, sir? Well, it's a 10-band EQ, and right now I'm centered at uh, 3,000, 2,500, 2,000, and 1,500. That's the top end. Roger. Now, your bandwidth, are you 100 to 2,900 on your bandwidth? I am, uh, actually, I'm showing 90 to 3,100 is what I'm set at. Close enough. <laughs> Say no more. Uh, I would go, what you're looking for is a little uh, a push at about uh, 3KC, which would be, you know, uh, 2.6K, uh, 2.8K, you know, somewhere in there, at maybe uh, 3DB or, or so. Okay, that should be uh, maybe a 2 or 3DB at 2,500 and 3,000. Is there a difference? I would I would favor the three thousand. Now, did you did you push uh, three thousand uh, two dB or so? Uh, yeah, do it a little more. Yes, sir. Okay, there's another uh, two or three dB at uh, three thousand. Roger, I think the, the top end is getting a little bit more articulated, you know, and that's that's what you want, uh, uh, the brightness, you know, because uh, when you do become uh, somebody else's uh, noise, <laughs> you want uh, to uh, for them to be able to copy the words that you're saying, even though uh, you're competing with noise a great deal. So, uh, you know, that brightness will help you uh, cut through under adverse conditions, Roger. Okay, very good, thanks. Well, I'm at a little handicap here. I don't hear much above about uh, 24 or 2,500. Uh, so I can uh, make it sound good to me there, but I don't get the upper frequency. Thanks for your help. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And sometimes those uh, multi-band EQs, uh, like a 10-band EQ, <clears throat> can be very uh, problematical because uh, what I usually do is, um, uh, you know, when I'm looking for top-end boost on a, on a, on a like a 10-band EQ, I'll start at the mid-range, like 1KC, and I'll start stair-stepping those up like uh, a smile. You know, like a smile, kind of, uh, it doesn't go straight up, it kind of kind of angles up, you know, like a, you know, half a C or inverted C or something like that. And so you're just coming off 1KC. I always leave 1KC flat because, uh, you know, 1KC is mid-range. And if you if you boost 1KC, then it's so much harder for the top and the bottom end to catch up with it. So, you know, because we're talking about balance of audio. So if you leave 1KC flat, then that gives the top and the bottom EQs a lot better chance at uh, catching, you know, doing the doing the thing. So I would do like a half a smile on a, on a multi-band EQ. I would do half a smile coming from 1KC, then coming up towards, uh, you know, like uh, 3KC, 4KC, 5KC. I would just do a little uh, half a smile going up that way, Roger. 
Okay, very good. Well, that's what I've got on the 10 band. It, uh, you know, the lower end is down, uh, you know, a negative uh, 6 or 7, and uh, kind of angles up a little bit and then goes into an arc uh, all the way up to 3,000. So it goes from uh, the 100 to 3,000, very slightly increasing, except for the change that you just made, which is a little more drastic change. So I'd call it... Uh, a quarter of a smile on halfway and the rest of half a smile. How about that? <laughs> Close enough. It's whatever it is. <laughs> uh, use the super glue on it. It's it's done. It's perfect, Roger. Okay, thanks for your help and uh, appreciate uh, your service. Best of 7-3. We'll do it again sometime. KC9 VKV from Kilo 8, Charlie Tango. 7-3, Jim. Roger, Roger, Bob, and if you want to, uh, you can go to YouTube in the next couple of days. Uh, we'll have this uh, recording posted, so if you go to YouTube and do a call letter search for Kilo Charlie 9, Victor Kilo Victor, that will take you to our QSO and Vlog page, and you'll be looking for a QSO entitled My Group Air Check 112219. My Group Air Check 112219, Roger. Hey, Roger, thank you. I'm from KHCT. Roger, Roger, three seven. Uh, give me that call sign one more time, phonetically slowly. Kilowatt eight, Charlie Tango, K C T. Roger, I thought that's what it was. I wasn't sure. So thank you very much, sir. And uh, you have a real good uh, afternoon, great weekend. This is KC9 VKV and the Friday afternoon Kiso Vlog Network. If you've got a radio you want to check out, give me a shout. Gosh, we had about five or six, and I couldn't uh, pull anybody out. Um, let me see here. Let me go to Atlanta. <laughs> I'll go to the Atlanta SDR, and uh, we'll try this again. This is KC9VKV. And uh, we'll try this again. This is KC9VKV. Whiskey 2, Zulu Mike Zulu. Zulu Mike Zulu. Uh, gosh, I had to come back to my local antenna because uh, Atlanta was uh, giving me uh, about a billion stations also. So uh, uh, station Zulu Mike uh, Zulu, I think it was. Come back with your call sign phonetically slowly, please. Sure, my name is Kono and my call sign is Whiskey 2, Zeta Charlie Zulu. Zulu Mike Zulu. Over. Roger, Zulu, Mike Zulu, and what's your name, sir? Uh, my name is Kono, Charlie Oscar, November Oscar. Uh, one more time, please. And Kono, Charlie Oscar, November Oscar. Uh, Kona, is that correct? That is correct, Kono, Charlie Oscar, November Oscar. Roger, Roger, what's your location, sir? I'm in Wayne, New Jersey, uh, County, sir. Over. Alrighty, and uh, tell me about your antenna system, sir. Okay, the, uh, right now I'm running the homemade 550 foot loop, uh, sitting at about 25 to 30 feet off the ground, and um, that's what I'm running off of. And uh, I'm running uh, a Yaesu FT DX1200, which is new for me. And an eight-band uh, audio equalizer and noise gate. Over. Uh, Roger, I'm copying you on my uh, mag loop uh, uh, in the co-phase mode, and you're doing me about uh, looks to be about uh, six or seven uh, dB uh, above my noise level. Roger. Roger, Roger. Now I had a question for you, and uh, it's with the noise gate, the uh, eight-band uh, audio equalizer and noise gate, and uh, have the Currently have the equalizer and the radio off, and the processing unit off, and uh, the mic gain set to 20 on the radio, and um, I'm currently set to uh, plus uh, 14 on 50. Um, uh, 100 is set to plus uh, 8, um, and the 200 um, on the 8 band audio equalizer is set to. Uh, 200 is set to uh, about zero, along with the 400 um, for the lows and everything, um, as well as the 800 is set to zero. And uh, when it comes to 1600, 2400, and and 3200, their settings uh, go up to um, 8, 12, 
and 16. Well, what are your recommendations for the, uh, for the equalizer on the settings for the 1200? And uh, if you wouldn't mind uh, giving me a little recommendation on my audio, over. All right. I think your audio EQ curve is uh, very good. I think what you need to do is fatten your signal up, though. I would keep my EQ the same way it is. I would engage my compressor at about a 3. I would engage my compressor at about a 3. Roger. Okay, so you would like me to turn that compressor on and uh, engage it at about a 3. Over. Yes, sir. About a third of its ca uh, capabilities. Uh, three out of ten, uh, thirty out of a hundred. About a third of the uh, compressor capabilities. Roger. Roger, roger. Okay, so the compressor is on now. I've turned it on. Does that make a, a little bit of a difference? Right. Now, double check to be sure you're just running about a third of its capabilities. Uh, you don't want to have 50% or 75%. You want one-third, 33% of its capabilities. Three out of 10 and 30 out of 100. Okay, so from my standpoint, that is about 33% right there. Sounds hotter than that, but uh, go to your ALC. And adjust your ALC by using your mic gain. Adjust the ALC for mid scale to two thirds. Mid scale to two thirds on your ALC. ALC mid scale to two thirds. And that's about what it rings right about now, sir. Over. Roger. Okay, tell me about your antenna system. And make, like I say, uh, we are assuming that your your compressor is at a three. And uh, what's your, what's your mic gain? What's your level, mic gain level? All right, and tell me about your antenna system, sir. It's a 550 foot loop, uh, loops around about uh, 12 trees out in the back forest. Over. Roger, you really sound pushed. Uh, uh, take your compressor out. Uh, take your compressor out and just uh, uh, let me hear you without the compressor, Roger. Okay, the compressor is now turned off. Okay, uh, I would take uh, um, I would take half of the what your what your level is that you're driving that compressor with. Turn it half down, uh, or reduce it by half of whatever whatever you're you know have you feeding the compressor. Uh, reduce it by half. Back on, and I reduced it halfway. Ah, now we're we're talking there. It uh, doesn't sound like you're trying to contact the uh, uh, Martians on the other side of the moon. You know, it sounds uh, uh, human, Roger. Roger, Roger. Okay. Um, yes. Uh, very good. I appreciate all your input there. And uh, if that's going to do me better, I'd like to hear it later on that YouTube. Uh, exactly. Now, now again, come back and uh, uh, give me about uh, 10 seconds or 15 seconds on what you like best about your radio. And I want you to be looking at your ALC and uh, with your mic gain in hand and be sure you're running at mid-scale to two-thirds. Roger. Hi, Roger, Roger. This is Whiskey T Zulu, Mike Zulu. And uh, I love this radio. It's, uh, I went from an FT-1000D, a very older radio, um, to uh, I got a really good deal on this radio. And um, I figured I'd pick it up. So um, someone came along from Pennsylvania and uh, an old timer and really loved my old radio. So I thought I'd make the transition. And um, right now, um, I'm showing the, uh, um, the ALC to be about mid-range, like you say, sir. Over. Roger. I think that's uh, I think that's close right there. Now, uh, what kind of uh, EQ do you have on that radio? This is the Whiskey Two uh, India Hotel Yankee Eight Band Audio Equalizer and Noise Gate. It's just the uh, the noise gate alone. It doesn't have the EQ plus, sir. Over. Roger, Roger. I'd say close enough. Uh, I get the duct tape and uh, and uh, apply it liberally to your system, Roger. Roger, Roger. Okay. Um, thank you for your help. You are very kind uh, in doing what you do, and thanks for coming back to my call. Over. Roger, Roger. Uh, uh, and also, uh, 
what we recommend from time to time is uh, to uh, use your watt meter as a VU meter. And, uh, you know, you put your watt meter, instead of R RMS, put your watt meter in PEP so it moves along, you know, and uh, then uh, turn it so you can see it as you speak. And uh, you know where the sweet spot is on that uh, meter, on your watt meter. Uh, uh, and uh, we, what you're going to try to do is uh, adjust your speech uh, on the mic to where you keep that uh, meter reading in the sweet spot. Roger. Okay, we'll do that. Um, yeah, I can see what you're talking about. Okay, very good. Thank you very much, and uh, I really appreciate the, all the help. You have a good day, sir. Over. Roger, roger. And slowly again with the call sign. Whiskey 2, Zulu Mike Zulu. Roger, and the name is Kana, correct? That's Kono, C-O-N-O, -O, and it's uh, phonetically Charlie Oscar, November Oscar. <laughs> Frequency is in use, sir. Frequency is in use. And Kono. I had an A at the end instead of an O. Kono. Roger. <laughs> roger. Lots of people do that, and it's okay. Roger, roger. All right. Three zero. Have a good afternoon. And uh, like I say, if you get a chance, uh, drop by uh, next uh, Friday, and uh, we'll compare notes. Uh, this is KC9VKV and the Friday afternoon QSO Vlog Network. If you've got a radio you want to check out, give me a shout. W-D-A-T-I-M. W D H, uh, give me the rest. Yeah, okay, sir. Uh, Whiskey Delta Eight, Tango India, Mexico. Tango India, Mexico, and the name, please. Uh, the name is Tim. Tango India, Mexico. Roger, Roger. What's your location, sir? I'm in Cleveland, Ohio. Roger, and you're doing a KW? No, no, a KW. No, I'm doing a hundred watts right now. Uh, <laughs> all right. You have a very good, it must be a resonant antenna system. Um, actually, yes. It's really close. I, I had to touch the auto tuner and the radio, uh, but I'm not running the amp right now. I'm just uh, uh, just straight into the antenna. It's a uh, inverted, or I'm sorry, it's an off-center fed dipole about 35 feet on the apex. And uh, like I said, 100 watts going right now. Roger, just a beautiful signal. Now, I would uh, I recommend running the uh, compressor at about a three. Uh, it's something that nobody will ever hear, but it's the beginning of the uh, fattening process. Uh, what I think is ideal is about a three dB dynamic range, and you would get that by running that compressor at about a three, and then uh, bringing up your ALC and adjusting your mic level to where your ALC meter was running mid-scale to two-thirds. Uh, those two combinations will give you a 3 dB dynamic range with an average percent of peak modulation between 80 and 85 percent. Okay, real good. Yeah, I'm looking at my compression right now. Uh, by the way, the, the microphone's a um, uh, Heil 781 and the rig is a ICOM uh, 7610. I do have uh, the compression at four right now. I am getting close to the top end of the ALC. You're telling me to drop it down a little? I would drop the compressor down to a three. Uh, that's a, a token amount, but it does exactly what it should do, Roger. Roger, okay, there's, there's a three. Uh, was there any difference there, sir? Uh, well, it, it depends on when we come out at the end. Are uh, you watching your ALC? Uh, yes, one, two, three, four, five. Um, on, on the high notes, it's, it's coming up towards the top. Roger. Now, I would uh, crank in just a couple of uh, dB more top end EQ, uh, just a, a little more brightness to your signal, uh, if, uh, if that would be possible, uh, uh, plus two from where you are on your top end EQ. Okay, uh, let's see. I'll, I, I can do that right now. And, uh, oh, actually, it's plus three. Uh, let's, uh, let's see, treble. Let's bring it up to a plus four. There's a plus four. Does that sound any different? Yes, sir. Now, um, I also, that 7610 is a beautiful radio. And if you go to, uh, uh, have you ever adjusted your... Um, uh, peak. Uh, yeah, go to quick and uh, come up with, uh, well, I think it's called uh, drive, drive. Uh, go to the quick uh, button on your radio and uh, find drive. 
Okay. Uh, okay, yeah, I, I can only access it while I'm talking. Uh, uh, tell me what to do from there. All right, uh, in drive, uh, adjust your uh, uh, drive uh, level. You should be around 50 at the moment. Take that up to about uh, 65. Okay, there's 65. Testing one, two. How does that sound? All right, tell me uh, again about uh, something that you like best about your radio. Well, I, I picked up a 7300 uh, last year and then uh, fell in love with the SDR radio and the waterfall and the display on it, uh, the color display. And uh, we decided to uh, pick up the 7610 since we fell in love with the SDR. And uh, the waterfall, of course, is a, is a very nice feature along with the band scope. Uh, it's, a, it's a sexy looking rig there. Roger, Bob. Conditions kind of uh, shifted down there a little bit. But anyway, on that drive, I like it. Uh, what it does, it uh, allows you, actually, if you were to continue on with that drive level, uh, you know, more of it, it uh, what it does is establish the dynamic range uh, that you would like as far as your modulation uh, ratio. Uh, I think 65 is about max uh, in my taste that uh, you don't really hear it working, but it does substantially increase your average uh, peak modulation. So uh, I would recommend just uh, a 65, uh, uh, but uh, you, uh, you know, if you get a chance, uh, check out the audio. Uh, we are recording now, and uh, if you uh, were to go to YouTube in the next couple of days, it usually takes us a couple of days to get, get the audio posted, but if you went to YouTube and did a call letter search for Kilo Charlie 9, Victor Kilo Victor, that would take you to our QSO Vlog page, and on that page, uh, you'd be looking for a QSO entitled My Group Air Check 11 22-19. My group air check, 11-22-19. Roger. Roger. Uh, I think you said your name was Jim. Um, okay. Yeah, we'll definitely do that. I really appreciate it. Um, I hopefully, uh, hopefully it sounds a bit better. It looks like it uh, actually has uh, a little bit better uh, 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 drive power to it. So uh, uh, I, think, uh, I think you uh, actually helped me out quite a bit there. Well, that's your radio, and uh, taking advantage of the uh, uh, possibilities of that 7610. 7610 is the only radio, I think, in the world that has a drive control that just uh, lets you set your audio exactly, exactly where you want it. Uh, and it's just uh, unbelievable. Uh, just uh, FYI, that drive, if you were to continue to advance that drive up to uh, its maximum capabilities, your dynamic range would be reduced to half a dB. Now what that means is I'm looking at your audio on a VU meter and uh, if you had that drive cranked all the way up instead of my VU meter bouncing around my VU meter would be just moving between zero level and minus a half a dB. It would just sit there and look like a, a plate volt meter. Roger. <laughs> oh, wow. Now, now that, that drive of I never read up on it. Is that a uh, a power the power driver, or is that all strictly audio? That's audio. I mean, in, but indirectly, it's uh, it's RF. You know, because the audio controls the RF. Right, right. But it's not actually increasing the drive uh, drive in the PA. Uh, it, it, it does by audio. I understand that, but. Uh, Okay, real good. I got a little bit better understanding on that feature also. Thank you very much, Jim. Roger, Roger. It is a dynamic uh, ratio cruncher. In other words, what we just did, we moved you up uh, dynamically from, say, uh, I think you were initially about a 6 dB dynamic range. Uh, we moved you up, I think, to about a 3 dB dynamic range, which is what I prefer. But if you continued on with that drive, see, you could take it on up to, to half a dB. So it just crunches the uh, dynamic, uh, dynamic ratio, Roger. Roger, Roger. I, I really appreciate it. Um, it, it, it looks like it's actually responding a little bit better with the, uh, the dynamic microphone instead of a, uh, a condenser on it. I, I really don't like them, but uh, uh, I, I really appreciate the help on this. Roger, Roger. Now, so we'll see the um, a, um, electri electric microphone, the same thing as, uh, 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 you know, um, 
well, gosh, what is the condenser microphone? Uh, Electret is the uh, little brother to it, but they share similar uh, characteristics as far as uh, a top end of the audio curve, uh, much, much more defined than a uh, dynamic microphone. Probably uh, on a given day, a uh, condenser microphone or electrode microphone would have maybe 10 dB more output at 10 kc than a dynamic microphone uh, and uh, you know so consequently when you switch say from uh, a dynamic microphone to a condenser microphone uh, you have to probably pull down the top end when you go inversely uh, from a condenser microphone to a dynamic you have to uh, increase the uh, the top end eq to uh, try to uh, to get the same uh, uh, brightness out of the dynamic that you had out of the condenser microphone roger Roger, QSL. Um, and I, I really appreciate all this info. That's uh, uh, it's really uh, really kind of you to <clears throat> to do this. And uh, I won't uh, hold the frequency up anymore. I will uh, uh, say seven three to you, and I will be looking forward to listening to the recording and uh, seeing how this radio sounds. Jim, I'm going to uh, wish you a 73, and uh, uh, we'll be listening out here. W-D-A-T-I-M, Cleveland, Ohio. Roger, Tim, uh, three that way, sir. Uh, just uh, a beautiful sound there. I think uh, we've uh, created perfection there, but you be the judge when you listen back. Uh, so three to you now, and have a great weekend. This is KC9 VKV, and the uh, V. QSO Vlog Network, uh, 9 till 5, we're recording, and then we'll post it up on YouTube. So if you have a radio you want to check out, give me a shout. Kilo Mike 4, Alpha India Delta. Kilo Mike 4, Alpha India Delta. Alpha India Delta Station, come back slowly with the call sign again. Thank you, Jim. This is Kilo Mike 4, Alpha India Delta. My name is David. I'm in Somerville, South Carolina. I'm talking to you on a Yezu FT-102 with an MD-1 microphone into an SB-200 linear. Roger, roger. Well, we're um, sharing the same uh, linear. Uh, so, um, hmm, are you running your compressor, sir? Really, it's turned just about off. All right. What we're looking for is to uh, have that impressor, compressor engaged at about a 3, about a 3 out of 10, 30 out of 100, uh, just about a third of its capabilities. Roger? Yeah, Roger on that. That's where it was setting. All right. And then uh, check a look at your uh, ALC and with mic gain in hand and adjust your ALC reading to where it's uh, mid-scale to two-thirds by uh, your, uh, your mic gain control. Yeah, Roger on that. Uh, adjusting it. Now I'm not seeing it on my meter. Uh, I guess I got the wrong... I don't... I got to figure out how to see it on the meter. I'm not... I don't know how. Uh, Roger. Well, you have to uh, consult your book about uh, how to uh, get that to ALC. Sometimes uh, the ALC, you just uh, tap it through. It's got, uh, you know, it's a multimeter and it's got a lot of functions, but I think if you just uh, uh, tapped it through, it would uh, come up on ALC. Uh, I'm not sure, though, on that radio. Yeah, Roger, on that. Yeah, I was trying it. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, okay. Um... No, that's too much mic gain. I'm getting it to move, but that's the extent of what it's doing. Oh, Roger. Now, uh, what you want is uh, to adjust your mic gain to where your ALC reading is uh, showing mid-scale to two-thirds. Roger? Yeah, Roger on that. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, it's not going to do that. I'm going to have to go back and read the book and find out how to use the meter. I know how to adjust it. I just don't know how to use the meter. I got you. I got you. Well, you know, the best thing is to uh, take that book and um, make yourself a cheat sheet. Whew, slippery word there. Uh, make yourself a cheat sheet and, uh, of how to get to things very quickly. Now, you only need, you know, five or six things uh, to know how to get to. One is your mic gain. One is the uh, compressor and the comp putting it in line and getting the adjusting the volume. Uh, the next is your ALC meter and uh, then your EQ 
uh, capabilities. And when, when you have those five things, uh, uh, you've pretty much got that uh, transferred radio uh, ready to work on it, Roger. Yeah, Roger, on that. Well, I'll tell you, I'm not as up on this as I should be because my go-to radio, which I've talked to you before, is an FTDX 1200, and I run a Howl 781G uh, microphone on it. Roger. Well, your uh, audio looks pretty good there. It looks to be about a 3 dB dynamic range, which is where you want to be. And uh, the EQ curve of the mic sounds uh, nice and uh, bright. Doesn't have a bunch of bottom end uh, to muddy out. So I would say you're in pretty good shape, Roger. Yeah, Roger. On that. I appreciate that, Jim. In fact, I've referred some of my friends to get on here with you. I know you helped Angel about a month ago. Uh, he's a friend of mine from this area. And I told him to get on with you, that you were the man that would have get him to uh, get his right for him, and you did. I uh, thank you for all the work you do with everybody out there, and I appreciate it. I'll say 7-3 to you, Jim. KM4, AID. Roger, roger, David. Uh, three is that way, sir. Have a great um, afternoon, beautiful weekend. And uh, if you get a chance to join us uh, next Friday. Between 3.30 and 5, where we record live and then post it up on YouTube, uh, you can go to YouTube and do a call letter search for Kilo Charlie 9, Victor Kilo Victor, and that will take you to our QSO Vlog page. Right now, we're running about 820 some odd QSOs. Uh, you'll be looking for one specifically entitled My Group Air Check 11 19 which is today's date. My Group Air Check 11 19 This is KC9. VKV in the QSO VLOG network. November 8, Hotel Mike Golf. Hotel Mike Golf, uh, come back slowly with your call sign again. My mic. I think I have a loose mic. I think I got it. The call sign is November 8, Hotel Mike Golf. Norway 8, uh, Henry Mike Golf. USL? Uh, Roger, now, are you holding that mic together with two hands and your and your tongue? Well, apparently, I, you know, I've been doing a lot of digital, which is probably something I have a feeling you don't do much of, and uh, I've switched the mic back and forth, and apparently I haven't used it since I put it back on, and it was loose. I just tightened it up. Um, I'm looking, uh, my ALC is probably a little bit high. Uh, I have a tendency to run it a little hot, I think. I'm trying to adjust it right now. I've been listening to what you're saying, uh, and I'm curious where I fall in in, uh, in all of this. I'm sure I probably have a tendency to overdrive this radio. This is a Yezu FT5000. Roger. Well, it uh, doesn't sound uh, distorted. Uh, looks pretty good. Uh, I'll just ask you our, our normal setup procedure. Uh, uh, engage your compressor at about a three. That's the beginning of our, our setup. Uh, your compressor on at about a three, about a third of its capabilities. Roger. Yeah, the processor, I'm assuming, is the same thing, and I have it set at about uh, a three out of ten uh, from what I'm looking at here. And I'm trying to adjust the ALC to about uh, between half and two thirds, which I got to tell you is less than I normally run it. Uh, but if it sounds better, we'll do that. Uh, but I think those two things should be set up if I'm if the processor and compressor are the same thing. Uh, yes, they are. And uh, the thing is, uh, let me just uh, take a moment to explain. Uh, when you're looking at your AOC meter, the AOC meter is looking at the output from your limiter. Now, the limiter is uh, something that's built into your radio. You can't really control it. It's factory preset, uh, but you can manipulate it. Uh, and what that says is that uh, theoretically, <clears throat> if you run that AOC at about um, no, 20%, uh, your modulation level will be somewhere around maybe 6 dB, maybe 7 dB uh, dynamic range. So as you continue to bring your your uh, ALC uh, index reading forward or higher, then you will start to lim use your limiter to fatten your signal. Now a limiter, unlike a compressor, you can force a compressor to compress like 10, 20 dB because the compressor has a very slow attack and release time but your limiter has a very fast attack and release time so you don't want to push your limiter too far 
And I have found that uh, mid-scale to two-thirds is about as far as you want to push that limiter uh, before you start heading towards distortion as you move towards be becoming engaged in the red. You don't want to get into the red. You want to run your ALC mid-scale to two-thirds. Roger? Yeah, you know, and I'm not sure if I'm reading this meter right either. Now, this is uh, FT5000, and the ALC is the bottom meter on here. And there's a blue area that goes up to about 50% of the meter. And beyond that, then it's, uh, it's just uh, white. And I always thought you had to keep it in the blue range. But when you say half to two-thirds, are you saying half to two-thirds up that blue range? <laughs> uh, do you have a red range past the white range? That's the question. Um, I, I, you, I missed part of that. Say again. Do you have a red range past the white range there is no red range this this meter has is blue and then it's white on the the top half of that meter is white and the bottom half is blue there's no red all right i would keep it uh, in the blue right at the right at the edge of the blue is where, where i would put that roger roger that's correct yeah that's kind of what i thought too but i wasn't sure about that so i actually turned it up just a little bit that's about where i normally run it i try to keep it just in the blue, and that's what I thought. Um, you know, so, okay, those two things are correct. Now, I think I'm running this at 200 and 2800 is like the width of the, uh, the uh, audio. Yeah, Roger, you want to change that. You want to bump that up from uh, 100 to 2900. 100 to 2900 bandpass. Okay, I should have just bumped that up. Now, I've also got another... There's a switch on the head of this microphone, and I'm on the deeper end of it. And I can go to the higher end if I flip that switch. There's, there's a few adjustments here. All right, uh, give me um, give me a five count and at two. Uh, well, shoot, give me a, <laughs> let's go all out. Give me a ten count. <laughs> I can afford it. Give me a ten count and at five. Can you uh, switch the switch? Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, so I am on the. Uh, I believe this is the deeper. Uh, audio, and I'll start counting, and at five, I'll switch. So uh, this is one, two, three, four, five, and I've just switched six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Roger, roger. The, uh, the second half of that ten count was had a little bit more bottom end, so I would put it back where it was uh, in the beginning, roger. Yeah, you know what, I think I had, what I was explaining was in reverse. And to be honest, I like to riot, run it at a little higher pitch. Uh, I talk a little bit of DX, and I think that punches through a little better, I, and I like a more natural tone. Roger, I think you got it there. And again, now you want to run that radio uh, 100 to 2900, because what happens is when you uh, run it at uh, lesser uh, bandpass, you uh, the first thing that you do is chop off the top end of your audio. You start restricting the top end of your audio by running it at less than 100 to 2900. So be all that you can be, 100 to 2900, Roger. Yeah, it'll go more than that, but that's fine with me. I like it uh, uh, a little bit wider, too. I was thinking more like the uh, uh, deep ends, but it, yeah, I, I never really thought that it's cutting out the high ends also. All right, well, thanks a lot. Uh, I'll, I'll have to listen and see, see what I sound like. Uh, I was kind of cringing, wondering what you were going to say. Uh, yeah, the name here is Stan, Sierra Tango Alpha November near Cleveland, Ohio, and uh, Jim, thanks a lot for the help. Roger, and the call sign again, please? Yeah, the call sign is November 8, Hotel Mike Golf, N8HMG. And that's near Cleveland? Yeah, I'm 20 miles southwest of Cleveland, Ohio. Roger, excellent, excellent. All right. Yeah, and uh, you know about uh, the uh, YouTube uh, location? Yeah, I've been listening here. I'm going to go check out what everybody else did in some of your other videos and or, uh and I'll, uh, I'll listen up for myself uh, later on. But uh, thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Roger, Roger, Dan. Well, it usually takes us a couple of days to uh, get this up. So, uh, you know, give us uh, 48 hours uh, and we should 
should have it up on YouTube by then. And uh, you'll be looking for uh, one entitled My Group Air Check 112219. My Group Air Check 112219, Roger. Yeah, Roger. Name is Stan, Sierra Tango Alpha November. 7 3s, Jim. With Roger, Roger. Did you say Stan? I thought it was Dan. Stan, is that correct? It is Stan with an S. Sierra Tango Alpha November. Roger, Roger, Stan, alias Dan. <laughs> we'll catch you later. If you get a chance, uh, join us uh, uh, next uh, Friday. We uh, go live from 3.30 to 5. Uh, three is for now. Have a great weekend. This is KC9 VKV and the Friday afternoon QSO Vlog Network. If you've got a radio you want to check out, give me a shout. November, November 4, Germany, America. November 4, Germany, America. Now, I've got to write that down. November 4, Germany, America. And what's the name there, please? Name is Rob. Roger Oscar Bravo. How are you, sir? I'm good. Now, is that uh, a mechanical echo or a room echo? That's a room echo. I apologize. I'm in, uh, this might be a bad room for this test. This is a, a basement with a concrete floor and a 12-foot high ceiling. All right. Uh, what you want to do to minimize that is work tighter mic. So I would say uh, come on in there, maybe uh, uh, two or three inches from mic. That will minimize your room echo, Roger. Roger, Roger. I got a little bit closer. Uh, Roger that. Now, uh, what radio are you running? Uh, this is a Flex 6300. Okay, I'm hearing uh, quite a bit of compression when you first key, so I would, uh, first thing, uh, uh, keep the uh, compressor in line, but reduce its uh, possibilities to about a third. Uh, 3 out of 10, uh, uh, 30 out of 100. About a 3 out of 10 or 30 out of 100, about a third of the compression capabilities, Roger. Okay, I turned it, uh, I turned it way down. Um, on the flex, we've got a whopping three choices between normal, DX, and DX plus, so I just moved it back to normal. All right, just key it. Don't talk, but just key it for three seconds and then back off. Yeah, yeah, and you don't have anything less than that? No, but I can, dr I can pull my mic gain back. All right, tell you what, uh, dump out of your uh, compression and uh, just let me hear your radio direct without the compressor. Roger. Okay, here it's uh, completely turned off. This is November 4, Gulf Alpha. All right, now uh, engage your uh, ALC meter. Bring your ALC meter up and adjust your mic gain to where your ALC is running mid-scale to two-thirds. to two-thirds would be back in here. Uh, over. Roger. Now, are you uh, actually adjusting a, a physical pot, or is this a, a computer thing? Oh, it's a computer thing. <laughs> Roger, because I thought I heard a dirty pot. <laughs> I wonder if that's possible on a computer where you're doing, uh, well, anyway, I don't know. But it did, did sound uh, ragged there at one point. Uh, so uh, let me, um, uh, tell me about your antenna system and be looking at your uh, uh, ALC meter and uh, with mic in hand and uh, just uh, play with it a little bit to get your uh, level set at uh, mid-scale to two-thirds as you tell me about your antenna. Okay, sir. Uh, this is November 4th, Gulf Alpha. The antenna is a standard 40 meter resonant dipole. Uh, it's up about 60 feet. And I'm going to pull this back a little bit. So now we're back some. And uh, yeah, it is possible to get some noises like that when you adjust a, uh, a computer level. I've seen it before. Okay, now uh, go ahead and uh, put your compressor in there, uh, the, about uh, a third of its capability. Uh, what do they call that? N nothing almost? Yeah, so it's a processor. They call it the PROC, and you can turn it off. Uh, and then if you turn it on, you have normal DX and DX+. And right now I turned it back on and put it in normal. 
Oh, so it's in normal now? Correct. All right, so uh, tell me about your antenna system uh, and uh, uh, look again at your ALC because, you know, anytime you make a, a, a correction to the audio chain, you should always go back and double check your ALC because, uh, you know, just the act of an insertion of the compressor could uh, t cause that ALC to. Uh, uh, boost up, uh, you know, and what you want to do is be always running mid-scale to two-thirds regardless of whether the compressor's in there, whether you're running a microphone with 20 dB out or a microphone with 10 dB out. Uh, those all are adjustments that need to be made because the end process is you want that AOC meter to be running mid-scale to two-thirds. Roger? Yeah, Roger. So it's, it's maybe a little bit low now, so I'm going to move it back up as I speak, and uh, now just on the very peaks of my voice, I see that the, the compressor is coming in a little bit. Uh, roger that. And uh, what's your power amp? Uh, are you running a power amp? I am. It's a solid state uh, power amp. It's doing about 500. Uh, roger. And just out of curiosity, what's your drive power to it? Uh, 37 watts. Uh, roger that. Roger that. Well, okay, uh, what I would do, some people have naturally peaky voices. Now, it's not a big deal. It just means that, that sometimes when they talk, they um, attack certain words at higher levels than other words. Uh, and that's just a, a speech pattern that one may have. But what I recommend is that you take your watt meter and uh, turn it around to where you can see it, put it in the uh, uh, PEP mode so it'll move fairly quickly, and then uh, watch that as you speak and try to keep that, uh, that watt meter in the sweet spot uh, by utilizing your, your voice to do that. Roger? Uh, yeah, Roger. So um, that, that'll be tough on this watt meter because it's uh, LP100A digital, so it's just jumps all over the place, but I, I understand. I think I can probably do better by watching um, one of the other meters here on the screen to figure out which one. Uh, Roger. Well, you know, the main thing is that uh, you would be in the PEP mode versus the RMS mode, because PEP will move uh, three times faster than RMS. Roger. Okay. Um, yeah, so what I have a uh, equalizer on, a transmit equalizer on, and should we should we mess with that any? Sounds pretty good. Uh, I wouldn't, uh, you know, I'm not in favor of a bunch of bottom end. Uh, I try to uh, get the EQ where it uh, it's, would be good for QSO and would be good for contest, you know, so you don't have to flip back and forth across. Main thing is that you have your radio uh, in the uh, bandpass mode uh, 100 to 2900 or thereabouts. Uh, you know, you uh, increase uh, friends and uh, enemies' reactions when you get past uh, 20. Uh, you know, and start to splatter out, uh, you increase uh, folks uh, coming to look for you with hammers and all kinds of things, you know. So you want to you want to keep that top end at about 29, bottom end at about 100. So 100 to 29, I think, is the magic band pass. Roger? Okay, Roger. So if there's an area to improve on here, um, what should it be? Well, you could uh, crank in just, I, I, I seldom say this, but uh, the bottom end, maybe you could do just a, a couple of dB at uh, 150 cycles, 200 cycles, uh, if, if you wanted to. You could afford to expand on, on the bottom end just a tad. Okay, yeah, I'm not, I'm not so worried about that. I just mean overall, like... Uh 30,000 foot level besides the fact that my voice is peaky and there's a uh, an echo in this room um, Is there anything else I should go after or are we pretty good here? 
Pretty good. Now, uh, you know, when you start working tighter mic, the tighter mic did solve the room reverberation problem. So I would run the mic just like that. But if I had a chance, I would go down to my local music store and get myself a foam windscreen and just slip over that mic. Uh, you know, there's no downside to a foam windscreen and only, a, you know, a positive uh, that it will. It's the filter that uh, just makes your station sound really pro that uh, you you don't hear any transients, pops, peas, bees, and uh, but uh, you know, in, in other words, any kind of noise coming out of your mouth except words. Roger. Roger. Okay. Well, I really appreciate it. Thanks for the time. And um, uh, by the way, you've got a really good signal here. You're about 20 over. I'm just north of Atlanta, so I'll jump off of here and uh, wish you a very uh, good weekend and uh, let you. EQ. Stand by. Uh, yeah, I just went to the uh, Atlanta EQ, and I didn't have a copy on you, but that's the way Mother Nature is. Uh, great copy. I think you've uh, got it going on. If you get a chance to uh, uh, join us uh, next Friday, we uh, go live between 3.30 and 5, recording all the time. We'll be posting this up on YouTube in the next couple of days. So if you get a chance, go to YouTube and do a call letter search. Kilo Charlie 9, Victor Kilo Victor. And uh, you'll be looking for an air check entitled My Group Air Check 112219. My Group Air Check 112219. Roger. USL, I really appreciate it, Jim. All right, KT9 BKV, this is November 4, Gulf Alpha. Much appreciated. 73. Roger, Roger, threes. And there is another voice out there. Go ahead, other voice. Yeah, that, that's it. Whiskey Yankee 8 Delta. RF in your signal. Maybe it's me. Uh, <laughs> stand by one station. The, the other station, uh, uh, try it again. I know that doesn't sound intelligent, but I, <laughs> I don't have a call sign for either one of you guys. Uh, somebody, uh, there was somebody trying to get to me there and just earlier. Whiskey Yankee 8 Delta. November. Whiskey Yankee 8 uh, Delta, what's the name, please? Yeah, Jim, uh, the name here is Stu, Sierra Tango Echo Whiskey. Over. Roger, Stu. Whereabouts are you, sir? Hey, and I'm located in uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan. Uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan. We have spoken uh, a couple times, and I was on my Icon Pro 2, um, and you got that all straightened out for me. And uh, I don't know if you recall the conversation, but anyway... Um, I put that in the retirement stage of the shack here, and now um, purchased a um, ICOM uh, 7610, and just kind of wondering how it sounds to you, over. Ah, uh, yes, the 7610. All right, well, tell me about your antenna system for about 10 seconds. Okay, very good. Well, the antenna is a uh, Force 12 beam up at uh, about 45 feet has the 40 meter um, additional uh, kit on there and uh, and uh, running the amplifier the Ameritron AL80B at about uh, 1 kW over. Oh, Roger, okay uh, just for kicks uh, go to quick on your receiver front there quick and uh, then go to uh, your um, your drive control You have to remember, I am really new to this radio. I'm looking for the quick, and I don't, um, I don't see it right offhand. Uh, I'm looking for it, but I don't see it, Jim. Roger, you're running a 7610. That's correct. All right. Look to the left, uh, left side. I think it is. Uh, it's a thing called quick. I think it's a push button. Okay. Yep. I got it. Okay, hit quick, and then that'll bring up your drive. Yep. On your drive, what is the setting? 50%. Uh, All right, move your drive to 65%. There's 65. All right, you're done. <laughs> that easy, huh? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Your EQ is fine, uh, and that uh, moving from 50 to 65 percent ensures your 3 dB dynamic range with your average peak modulation uh, coming up there around uh, 85 percent. Roger. Okay, very good. Yeah. Um, yeah, we changed the bandpass in here, so I know that's correct, 
and uh, the microphone here is one of those Heil uh, microphones and running that through an audio equalizer. I don't know if you recall that conversation a while back or not, but uh, you got to really right on the money with my Pro 2, and uh, and now that radio is off to the side, and uh, the 7610 is <laughs> taking its place, so I just thought I heard you on the air, and I wanted to contact you so bad, because uh, I really appreciate the uh, information that you provide and the service that you provide, and uh, just kind of wanted to see what we could do here with the 7610, over. Well, Roger, Roger, Stu, now the thing is uh, that... Uh what you want to be sure and do is address that microphone just like you're doing now. Adjust your microphone just like you're doing now because with uh, that drive up, what that means is that drive's going to do everything it can to keep your volume up. And if you were to turn your head off mic to where you lost your syllabic range, your drive would try to continue keeping your modulation level up and it would become bassy. So uh, you want to be sure and stay on access to your microphone, Roger? Roger. Okay. We'll make sure that we do that. And uh, yeah, I can already see an increase in the, um, in the uh, ALC here a little bit, too. Uh, now, that does affect the ALC, correct? Yes, yes. And you, and you want to keep that ALC mid-scale to two-thirds if, if you can. Yeah, it's, it's just... Actually, um, I'm in. It's got. I'm in the ALC position, and it's just peaking right at the very end. Is that too much or no? Sounds good to me. Just, just stay out of the red. You don't want to be in the red, Roger. Roger. Okay, Jim. I won't hold it. I know there's several others uh, trying to contact you as well. But thank you for your time, and I really do appreciate it. KC9 uh, VKV from Whiskey Yankee 8 Delta. Roger, Roger, Stu, 3 z way, sir. Have a good afternoon, a great weekend. And with that, uh, gosh, we turned into a pumpkin about seven minutes ago. We usually go 3.30 till 5 live, and uh, we're now at uh, 7 past. So we're going to have to jump out of here. Uh, we have enjoyed it, uh, and uh, our uh, twin Magloop uh, vertical antennas have been just a joy today. Um, <laughs> most of my uh, Internet SDR receivers have been down. Uh, I have run two, uh, so two of them have been down because they were set up on the uh, on the wrong um, router, which is about 110, 120 feet away. And I I have another router about five foot away that they they should have been set up on, and will be set up on that next uh, next week. So we'll say threes to all. And again, if you uh, want to, if you go to YouTube and do a call letter search for Kilo Charlie Nine Victor Kilo Victor, that will take you to our QSO Vlog uh, page on YouTube. YouTube, and uh, you'll be looking for my group air check 112219. My group air check 112219. So we'll say threes all enjoyed it very much, and uh, you join us uh, next Friday if you can. This is KC9 VKV clear.